Ian Sweet, Show Me How You Disappear album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning. Here to chat about this new uh, Ian Sweet album, aka Jillian Medford. She has been at it for a few years now. And around the time of her Shapeshifter album, I actually became a casual fan of hers. I didn't know if I was going to be too wild about this album at first. The lo-fi production caught me off guard in a bad way. But the chaotic, oddball songwriting, as well as the eclectic and very colorful atmospheres, did win me over. And Slime Time Live is just a great track. Now, her follow-up album, Crush Crusher, was a whole lot different. And everybody that I really talked to about music was hyping this album up uh, quite a bit. It was much more by the books, and it showed her just going in a much more by the books dream pop and indie pop direction. But I kind of thought that it wasn't really very game-changing. It was nice on the ears, but I wasn't wild about this album. And... To be honest, a lot of the singles leading up to this new album here really just didn't move me, to be honest. Let's talk about this thing. This album starts off with my favorite cloud, and it is certainly an odd intro. It actually brings me back to a lot of her more lo-fi and oddball beginnings. But it's also triumphant and kind of sweet in its own way. It's also just human enough to really stick with you. It's a weird start, but it grabs your attention, which I do enjoy. I mean, Ian Sweet, to me, is certainly a very interesting pop star, at least. Sword is a nice surprise, and I think it's probably the best track here. This track has such a great groove to it, and Ian here, I don't think I've heard her sound this confident on a track ever. Lyrically, though, it packs a punch, and I feel like we've learned more about her as a person more in this track than any time on her first two albums. It's also just really catchy. And Dirt is really cool as well. As far as a cosmic track goes, this is the best one here. It's just so gloriously textured, and I just love how haunting her performance is here. This track, to me, excites me so much for her future. And it's so simple. The instrumental here is so subtle. But this is just the complete package. Ian Sweet here, to me, sounds like a star. But I worry that Ian Sweet still is kind of finding her way. Drink the Lake, on the other hand, is even odder, but not in a really interesting way. But it's like murky sounding and dark at times, which I thought I'd be much more into. This is an odd crossroads of where she started and where she is now. And the result is, quite frankly, average. Like, her vocals are very decent, and lyrically, this remains a knockout. Outside of that, I worry here that Ian Sweet is still figuring her sound out. And it's not like I don't get the appeal of this album. Like, Sing Till I Cry, I get it. But for me, this sluggish, slow-paced instrumental just doesn't complement Ian Sweet's style. Like, I get the appeal. Like I said, her lyrics here, once again, are... Whew, really a lot to take in and her very quiet, hushed performance makes it a real knockout. But for me personally, it's not what I go for from her. I don't think it's the worst track here though. As a matter of fact, some of the more epic moments here are pretty great. But Dumb Driver, man, this one almost put me to sleep. I think her vocals actually come off good here and I love the dreamy atmosphere. But this off-kilter pacing is just really distracting. And the rest of this album is kind of hit and miss. Uh, get Better, as far as a soft ballad tune goes, probably the best track here. This is one of her most compelling vocal tracks here. It is awesome. And emotionally, this is absolutely crushing. Like, she sounds on the verge of tears, but at least some of the most compelling moments here. And Power is pretty good, too. This one actually, once again, has a sort of lo-fi feel to it. But it's pretty powerful, and her performance is pretty huge. It's not like this softer side of her can't work. It's all about presentation, and here, it works. But Show Me How You Disappear is... Just not for me. I do like the hypnotic riff and the hazy production, but halfway through this track, we get this really awkward disconnect. This track takes off nicely, but it can't stick the landing, much like a lot of this album. And I see everything as a finale just has me shrugging. I do like how tender and emotional this is, and their vocals sound great, but everything else about this track is painfully average. So a lot of this album I appreciate her vocals, her performances, as well as just how emotional and personal she's gotten to write her lyrics here. It is a crushing album. Why are these instrumentals so bland? Why is this production so spotty? And 
why is it still that I feel like she's trying to find her way? She has all the makings of a really great star, but I'm just not feeling it just yet. I do get the appeal, though, of most of this album. For me, though, I'm feeling a strong six on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.